What's up? I'm Vin, and today I want to show how to solve the most common type of quadratic equations. So we're going to go through these seven examples. Here's some notes and some formulas to help us out, and let's get started. So for the first question here, we're looking at the equation 3x squared minus 12 is equal to 0. And the first thing we want to look for is if the equation is set equal to 0, which it is. And then next, we want to look for a greatest common factor. And notice 3x squared and minus 12 have a greatest common factor of 3. And to find the leftovers, just divide everything by 3. 3x squared divided by 3 is x squared. And then we have minus 12 divided by 3 is 4. Now, from this step, the next type of factoring we need to know is difference of two squares. That any time we subtract two square terms, we could factor this as a plus b times a minus b. So looking at this, I need to think about which term times itself is equal to x squared. And that would be x times x. And then I write my plus minus next to my terms and my factors. And now I think about which term times itself is equal to 4 and 2 times 2 is equal to 4. So this is how we would factor the equation we're starting with. And now we're going to set the factors equal to 0. Don't waste time setting 3 equal to 0 because that's just a false statement. But we're going to set the second factor, x plus 2, equal to 0. And then we're going to set the last factor, x minus 2, equal to 0. And then from this step here, we just solve these simple equations. And this part you could just do in your head and write out the answer. But we're going to have one solution of x equals negative 2. And we'll have a second solution of x equals positive 2. So this is our solution to the first example. Now for the second example here, we're looking at the equation negative x squared plus 8x is equal to negative 48. And the first thing we should check is this equation set equal to 0, and it's not. So what we want to do is it's better to send the x squared to the side that would make it positive. So since we have a minus x squared here, I would prefer to add x squared to both sides so that I start off with a positive x squared. That usually makes factoring easier. So we could add x squared to both sides, and we could also subtract 8x on both sides. And on the left side, notice everything cancels, and we're left with the 0 that we need. And on the right side, we have a positive x squared, we have a minus 8x, and we have a minus 48. So from this step here, the trick to factoring this type of quadratic equation is we're looking for two numbers that add up to negative 8 and multiply to negative 48. So when you think about this, this is like where your times tables and your ability to add numbers quickly comes in. But if you think about it carefully, the numbers are going to be negative 12 and positive 4. Because if you do negative 12 plus 4, you're going to get negative 8. And when you multiply negative 12 and 4, you're going to get minus 48. So what that helps you with is it tells you how to break this quadratic down. So you're going to break this down into x minus 12, and you're going to have x positive 4. And if you want to check if you did this correctly, you could always multiply these two together, and it's going to bring you right back to the previous step. So now, same as before, we're going to set each factor equal to 0. We've got x minus 12 equal to 0. We've also got x plus 4 equal to 0. And from this step here, we just add 12 to both sides. And this will work out to x equals positive 12. And the second equation, when we solve, is going to give us our second answer, x equals negative 4. So these are our two solutions to the equation that we started with. So for the third question here, now we're looking at the equation x squared plus 10x is equal to 0. And for this type of equation, the equation is already set equal to 0, but we're going to look for a greatest common factor. And the greatest common factor in this case is just x. So for this type of equation, this one is probably the quickest. We just take out a common x, and if we divide x squared by x, we're left with x. And 10x divided by x is just 10. So in an equation like this, we could just factor out a greatest common factor and then immediately set each factor equal to 0. The first factor, x, equals 0 when x equals 0. And then you set the second factor, x plus 10, equal to 0, which when we solve this equation, this is going to give us a second answer of x equals negative 10. So we have two answers to this equation, 0 and negative 10. Now, for question four, we're dealing with a case where we have x plus 10 in parentheses to the second power, and this is equal to 5. 
So for this type of question, we need to use the idea that the square root of x squared, be careful, is not x. It's equal to plus or minus x, or the absolute value of x. So when we're solving an equation like this, we could just go right ahead and take the square root of both sides. However, the square root and square do cancel out, giving us just x plus 10. But we have to set this equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. So we're using this square root property here that when you take the square root of x squared, it's equal to plus or minus x. So just be careful because a very common mistake here is that people will just say that x plus 10 is equal to square root 5, and they only get one answer. But that would be wrong. You have to set it equal to plus or minus the square root of 5. And from this step here, what we could do is just subtract 10 on both sides, and we're basically finished. Our solution to this question is x equals negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 5. Now, for some students, this form of the answer bothers them. It's a little bit confusing. But just know this represents two answers. So we could write our answer this way, or we could write our answer as negative 10 plus square root 5. And we could write the second answer separately as negative 10 minus the square root of 5. So whatever the decimal value of these two answers is would be our two solutions to the question that we started with. But the original form here with the plus minus is perfectly fine to write your answer like this. So for this fifth question here, now we're looking at the equation. We have negative 3x squared. We've got plus 7x minus 4 is equal to 0. And for this method, we can identify the coefficients of x squared x in the constant. So we have an a term, or the coefficient of x squared, is equal to negative 3. Our middle term, which we usually call the b term, is equal to 7. That's our coefficient of x. And our constant at the end is equal to negative 4. And this method for factoring is called the AC method, where you take the product of a and c. And negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. And the b term is positive 7. And then you're thinking about what two numbers have a product or multiply to 12 and have a sum of 7. And the two numbers, if you think about it carefully, are going to be 4 and 3. But then what do you do with those numbers? Those numbers are what you're going to use to break the middle term. So we're going to break the middle term 7x into 4x and 3x. And what this accomplishes, it allows us to factor this resulting equation by grouping. So if we group the first two terms together and the second two terms together, we could factor them and come up with a solution. So how are we going to factor this? We're going to use a greatest common factor. The greatest common factor between these two, we could take out an x. And I'm also going to take out a minus sign with it. You're going to see why in a moment. Because if I do negative 3x squared divided by negative x, I get a positive 3x. If I do 4x divided by negative x, I get a minus 4 left over. And the reason why I took the minus out is you could see right away that 3x minus 4 matches 3x minus 4. And I'm going to write the greatest common factor of 3x minus 4 outside. And the greatest common factor of 3x and minus 4 is just 1. So I would have 1 times 3x minus 4. Now you might be thinking like that writing a 1 outside seems excessive. But the reason why I encourage you to write this 1 is because I've had students forget to write this one in parentheses when they factor in the final step here. So, or the almost final step here. So here, one of the factors is gonna be three X minus four, and then the leftovers in front of three X minus four, I have a minus X, and I also have a plus one in front of the second factor of three X minus four. So then here, now that we have successfully factored this original expression, we're gonna set each of these binomials equal to zero and we'll be able to solve this equation. So the first equation, we just add x to both sides, and we'll have x is equal to positive 1. That's one answer. And then here, if I add 4 and then divide by 3, I'm going to have my second answer. So we just go through the algebra here, divide by 3 now. And our second answer is x equals 4 thirds. So we have two solutions to this quadratic equation here. Now, the next type of quadratic equation that we'll deal with is when all of the other factoring techniques don't work. When we try to come up with numbers that have a sum of negative 1 and a product of negative 1, and we just can't come up with them. 
And in my opinion, this is probably the most reliable method for finding roots of quadratic equations, and that's using the quadratic formula. Now, this is always my last resort because it does take a lot of time, but it is 100% reliable for any quadratic equation that you get. And here, we just have to identify the coefficients. Remember, this is for ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero, where a is non-zero. And in this case, I have an a value of one. That's my coefficient of x squared. I have a b value of negative one. I have a c value of negative one. And when I plug this in, I'm gonna have x equals negative b, and b is negative one. And I have plus or minus the square root of, and be careful at this step. A very common mistake here is people forget to put parentheses around negative terms before they square it, and it could mess up what you get under the square root here. So we have minus four times a is one, and c is negative one. And this is all over two times a, which is gonna give us two times one. And the first thing we're gonna have, negative negative one changes to positive one. We have plus or minus the square root of, Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, and I have negative 4 times 1 times negative 1 becomes a positive 4. And this is all over 2. So my solution to this equation is going to give me 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 divided by 2. So I have two answers here, which the plus or minus captures both of our answers to this specific quadratic equation. Now the last question that we're gonna look at is we have x squared plus three x plus 10 is equal to zero. And for this type of quadratic equation, we're dealing with the case where we have imaginary roots. So the concept behind this is that anytime I wind up with the square root of a negative, and the most basic one is taking the square root of negative one, I take the square root of the real number, which is just one, and then the square root of the negative comes out as the term i. So I could say one i, or I could just say i like this. If I was taking the square root of negative nine, the square root of nine is three, and then the minus comes out as an i like this. So we run this through the same quadratic formula as before. We have an a term of one, a b term equal to three, and a c term equal to 10. So when I use the quadratic formula, we have x equals negative b, plus or minus the square root of, the b term squared gives us three squared, minus four times the a term, which is one, times the c term, which is 10. And this is all divided by two times a. So I have two times one. And now I start to simplify this. And the square root term is the part that's gonna give us the most trouble. We're gonna have nine, minus 40, which already I could see is clearly negative, which tells us we're, gonna, we're going to have imaginary roots. So I have two times one is equal to two. So then here at the next step, we have negative three plus or minus the square root of nine minus 40 is negative 31, and this is all divided by two. So the way I handle this, in the event that I have something like minus 10 and I have a non-perfect square, then the minus just comes out as an i, and the non-perfect square stays under the radical. So I would have x equals negative 3 plus or minus i times the square root of 31, all divided by 2. So these are my two solutions to the last quadratic equation, and they are, in fact, imaginary solutions. Okay, well, this is going to conclude this video on solving the most common types of quadratic equations. If you found this video to be helpful, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you got any requests, leave the topics you want me to cover in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.